Hello and welcome back to Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous. So, we have been given our mission by Queen Galfrey and it is time for us to talk to everybody and see what they feel about it. Starting with Anevia. Anevia sweeps an inquisitive glance over you. So tell me straight, how'd that brawl at the Grey Garrison end? I heard the rumours of course, that's kinda my job, you know, to listen. You have no idea what the cobbler, what cobblers the Crusaders say about you. Some say that Iomide came to you and appointed you her herald. Others say that you died. And an honest-to-God's angel is now leading the army disguised as you. Still, others say it was just an explosion at an alchemist lab. And I'm the one spreading rumours about your powers. I wish. But you know, you really have changed since the Grey Garrison. It's hard to describe. You've become kinda... And Evia waves her hand, trying to find the word. Um... Mm, smarter? I'm more dangerous. I have a gut instinct about these things. If I didn't, I'd already be dead. You're dangerous, Commander. And by Desna, I hope you'd, you'll be dangerous to our enemies and not to us. Or to yourself. Alright, I have to go. Alright, you watch yourself now. Hmm, dangerous. It's an interesting word to use for us. Right, so now this is our camp and we get to talk to everybody again. Some people have moved around. Wait, did I see that? Oh, wait, that's us. Okay. I was, I was trying to figure out who that was for a second. We also need to go and talk to absolutely everybody uh, new as well, because we've got uh, Nura Dendawar is new. Uh, we need to speak to Tira Bayed again, because now she's no longer following us. And then there's a couple of others. This Lightbringer, who I guess doesn't have his own tent. And then there was one other, Soasil, a cleric. Hello. Commander, allow me to say something. Erebeth looks even more serious than usual. Before you, this wasn't a war. It was agony, drawn out over decades. No one believed in victory anymore. When the demons attacked the city, it was some for some it was a relief. At least the end had come. They laid down their weapons and surrendered without a fight. I felt the same thing, but somehow I got through this stubbornness and the vague hope that if nobody found Anevia's body, she might, by some miracle, have survived. And that miracle was you. You returned my beloved to me when I'd nearly lost all hope of seeing her alive again. Then you went on a suicide mission to the Grey Garrison and won back the city for us. You turned a defeat into a victory. I know it wasn't easy, but you make everything seem so effortless. You do everything just like that, she says with a snap of her fingers. The Queen believes in your powers too, but for me... They're just more proof of what I felt that day when I saw Anevia alive, standing next to you. You're the miracle we've been waiting for. You're the one who will finally put an end to this terrible war, and in spite of everything, deliver us the victory we so desperately need. With you, I'm sure this crusade will achieve what the others could not. Okay, let's see where we want to go f from here. Uh, I found a scabbard with your family name on it in the Grey Garrison. Erbeth looks down. This scabbard held this solemn hour, my family sword. My father once fought with it, and I took it when I left home to become a paladin. Alas, it was not stolen. I parted with my heirloom willingly, to help someone dear to me. Anevia needed expensive healing, and, having no other way to procure the money, I pawned my father's sword. I think he would have understood. I'm sure he would have given up everything to help the family. I hope to redeem this so solemn hour eventually, but there was never enough money, and soon the sword disappeared from the pawn shop altogether. I have no idea who took it. Seems like I'll have to part with my father's sword forever. Is Anevia sick? You'll forgive me if I don't go into detail. It is a private matter. Suffice to say, everything is fine now. The treatment was costly, but it was worth it. Hmm. Well, I can see that you truly love her. A delicate blush appears on Irabeth's cheeks. She nods silently. Irabeth lovingly traces the name imprinted in silver on the scabbard's leather. My parents were loyal servants, yet it wasn't enough to earn them a title or a coat of arms. Still, however humble her name might be, it is worth something. I don't know if I'll ever see the solemn hour again, but at least I have its scabbard back. Thank you. So it turned out that the Queen had her head of counterintelligence watching me. I wonder why. You think the Queen doesn't trust you. If that were true, she wouldn't have put you in charge of this army. My main task is to be your advisor until you've gained enough experience as a commander. As for counterintelligence, Anevia and I were 
tasked with keeping an eye on your inner circle, but you're not under suspicion, Commander. You're under our protection. Yeah, I could see why you don't trust my inner circle, given it includes people like Ember over here, who is quite clearly evil. Um, we need reinforcements. Can you get us more soldiers? Irbeth frowns. When we began the march on Dresden, we chose speed over numbers. If I order more volunteers to be recruited, they simply won't arrive in time. We could pay mages to deliver the troops to the camp, I expect. Except I doubt our army's coffers could afford it. If you can spare seven and a half thousand gold coins, I will see to our reinforcements. Perhaps later. Yeah. As you command. Hmm. It's hard to believe your origin is so humble. You deserve a noble title more than many who, inter who inherit them. Your best cheeks uh, blush a little. Oh, thank you, Commander. It is an honor to hear that, especially from you. Every noble family begins somewhere. You must have heard the recent story from the Stolen Lands in the River Kingdoms. Just imagine, coming from nowhere and making it all the way to a royal crown in just a few years. <sighs> Sometimes I wonder what would happen if I managed to distinguish myself somehow. But then I push away such unworthy, selfish thoughts, of course. We don't fight for rewards. The fate of the world is at stake, and yet... Erebeth's blush deepens and she falls silent. Mmm. She has a, a... You know, she's got a seed of doubt. She's got a seed of um, wanting something. You know? It, it's that... Uh, it's the Star Wars thing. It's the... This leads to this, and that leads to that. And that leads to the dark side. You could definitely see it. You can see a fall for Erebeth where she's like, you know what? No, I deserve to be recognized. And then, you know, we have to deal with her by killing her probably. Anyway, short bow. Uh, we'll see her later. Ooh, loot. How did I miss loot? I, I couldn't have lived without that cheese. Hello. Ember is bobbing her head and humming a tune. She greets you with a careful, cheerful smile. Her wandering eyes linger on you for just a moment before darting off again into the distance. How are you handling your new abilities? Abilities? The girl tilts her head to her shoulder. What are you talking about? Oh, the tricks you learned when the big grey house blew up. They're funny. Thanks for teaching them to me. Uh, the Queen gave me the title of Knight Commander and put me in charge of an army. What do you think about that? The elf focuses her wandering gaze on your eyes, smiles and shakes her head. Don't believe titles. All of us in the world are children of the street. Barefoot, hungry, scared, a step away from death. Some imagine they're strong and rich like gods. Don't forget who you really are behind the title. Okay, see you later, um, Ember. Daniel, where are you? You're over here somewhere, right? Yes, all right, you're down the back, hello. Ah, girl, there you are. Uh, very good, just in time. You'll be delighted to know that I need you for an experiment. So, the Grey Garrison stands ruthless. Demons are running for the hills with their tails between their legs. Mendev's queen, oh, what's her name? Ah, it's on the tip of my, ah yes, Galfrey, is scurrying to and fro, and all this is somehow connected to you, my loyal follower? Thus far, there is no scientific evidence of your exceptionality, if one discounts blind faith in divine intervention, which I do. We, people of science, refuse to believe in the inexplicable without any proof. We are the ones who explain the inexplicable. Then he'll punctuate her statement with an energetic sweep of her arm. And therefore, open your mouth and say, ah, for me. Ah. Then he appears into your mouth with a practiced eye. All right, your throat's fine. Tongue looks perfectly normal. Your breath, she sniffs. Eh, the smell's in line with the regular functioning of the digestive system. Now for your teeth... She sticks one hand in your mouth and probes each of your teeth in turn with the skill of a seasoned dentist. No detectable alterations. By the way, did you know that many individuals, while being wholly civilized, representatives of their races, still have an amazingly powerful bite? As if suddenly recalling something, Nenio promptly pulls her head out of <laughs> her hand out of your mouth. Okay, interesting. You trying to find a correlation between fang length and civility? Ennio seems slightly embarrassed. For the good of science, I look for correlations everywhere and in everything. How can you prove there's no correlation if you don't bother to look for one? Hmm. Well, stay silent. 
Moving on. All right, what do we have next? Ears. Let's check your hearing. Testing. Nano yells right into your ear and nods in satisfaction as he observes your reaction. Your hearing is fine, was fine, but don't worry, it's scientifically proven that it should return to normal soon. Next, Nenio circles you. Eyes are clear, posture is satisfactory, limb length is standard, no lice. And she stops, rubs her chin in contemplation and, in a slightly dejected tone, says, Girl, you are the picture of health. It's a pity, I was expecting to find some anomaly. Uh, well, now let's assess your mental state. Imagine a hypothetical situation. You are a tree. Two squirrels have found their way into your hollow and are now copulating there. What do you do? Um, well, I'll do nothing because I'm a tree. Exactly. An unconscious act of withdrawal along with a l lack of trust in your own abilities, or perhaps just a healthy dose of pragmatism. On to the next question, another hypothetical situation. You are a tomato. You have been picked from the vegetable patch and put into a crate. You know that today the cook will use half the tomatoes from your crate to make soup. What do you do? There's nothing I can do. I'm a tomato, remember? Uh-huh, 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 an unconscious act of withdrawal, inability or unwillingness to see something bigger behind something small. All right, I understand. On the surface, it appears that you don't really believe in your ability to change things. In fact, you are a strong pragmatist who knows perfectly well what you can and can't do. Your reasoning is that of a mortal, one who is capable of achieving a great deal, uh, though she would deny even that. On that note, I deem this experiment complete. Thank you for your participation. Daniel looks at you pensively, then gestures at you with a wide sweep of her arm. And yet you remain a puzzle to me. I love puzzles. One of these days I will solve you completely, unless I forget. Now I have time to answer your questions. Come on, ask away. No, I'm done. See ya. All right. So Nenio's given us a large amount of questioning that hasn't really led us anywhere. Let us there we go. Head over here. Uh, Lan is next. Hey, Lan. Uh, what brings you here? Uh, what do you think of what happened in the Grey Garrison? Do you feel a change in yourself? Uh, it's hard to not notice when the demons start running away from you like a flock of frightened bats. Power is granted by Iomade to defeat demons. Lan raises his hand above his head and pensively scratches behind his single horn. Uh, since I was a kid, I've taken whatever I've been given and used it the best I can. Anything goes when you're trying to survive. It doesn't matter where your blessings come from. I... Uh, we can think about that when we're old, if we live that long. But, you know, this time, I'm not so sure. A divine power that just appeared out of nowhere? Sooner or later, we'll have to pay for it. And I'd like to know what the price will be. That's a good point. Yeah. What, what, what do they want for uh, giving us this power? Oh, hello. Hello. Got anything new? Hiller nods approvingly. Uh, you've earned the title of commander. Canapra still stands thanks to you. But you'll have to be doubly on your guard. Your eminence places a target on your back, and there are assassins about. Killing a high-ranking crusader will bring a demon far more prestige than killing a common soldier. And not long ago, I stymied a few of the spinner of nightmares attempts on the lives of, in of influential crusaders. So I know what I'm talking about. Which Crusaders did you save from the Spinner of Nightmares? Uh, I'd been hunting the Spinner of Nightmares for over a year. My agents, by the, that time I'd created a proper network, reported to me that she'd returned to Nerosian, and I immediately suspected that she was planning a great atrocity. Uh, by that time I'd learned all too well that the Spinner was a master of illusions and charms. That's why I never left the house without this. Ilor takes a monocle from his pocket and puts it on carefully. Uh, this is the Eye of Truth. It allows me to see through illusions. My friend got it from the priests of Nethys. However, neither this monocle nor my network of agents were adequate to prevent the attacks, and we were nearly too late. The Spinner of Nightmares decided to strike at the Cruciform Cathedral. They had gathered to celebrate the victory of the First Crusade. It was a great holiday, and there was a lavish ceremony at the cathedral. An influential priest, Anthotlitus was in charge of the festivities. They were intending to crown him with a tiara, a symbol of his high status. But the sacred tiara had been replaced. The spinner had obtained an incutilus, a sentient and rather ominous cephalopod, from the other end of the world. She'd raised it from an ilver and trained it carefully, and she cast an illusion on it so that everyone would see it as a tiara. 
The moment its shell was placed on Anthotlitos' head, the cephalopod would release its tentacles and penetrate the priest's skull. Its poison would seep into his brain and it would seize control over Anthotlitos' dead body. Fortunately, we were able to stop this madness in time. I spotted the spinner of nightmares in the crowd, chased her down, and we ended up crossing swords on the roof of the cathedral. I nearly defeated her, but she fled upon a great stallion, which was able to run across the air as if it were on the ground. I was so close to catching her. She had suffered a setback, but I let her escape. Hillor's bitter and angry smile shows he hasn't made peace of, uh, with his failure. Tell me about your confrontation with the Spinner of Nightmares. I think we already had this one. It's a long story. Telling you everything would take two days. Which part did you want to know? Alright, so we've already done all of this. Yeah, yeah. So this is just um, the next part of his story. And then we... I assume it will come... It will um, show up again when we get another part. Cool. We'll leave him be. Camellia, you're outside again. Hey, greetings. What do you think of the powers you received from me? Camellia shrugs nonchalantly. People of noble descent grow accustomed to ample opportunity. The powers I receive from you are useful, but I see no point in treating them with excessive piety. Okay, well, I'll leave you be then. Orgus? Orgus Squirm has been expecting you, thumbs stuck in his belt. Ah, there you are. I've been waiting. As you see, I too have joined the crusade. But I don't know how to swing a sword. I don't know how to swing a sword, but war is costly and I have money. Besides, my intellect and business sense may prove useful even on the battlefield. Besides, besides, I believe... Orgus shifts awkwardly from foot to foot. I believe I owe you an apology. The way I behaved was rude, ill-mannered. You're an honest and honorable person. You have clawed your way up from the bottom of society to the title of Knight Commander. And you are friends with Queen Galfrey herself. Such persistence deserves respect. Orgus tilts his head in a brief acknowledgement of your merits. Please allow me to give you this magic amulet from my humble personal treasury to mark our future cooperation. Blackened Mirror. Okay, tell me your story again, just so I can remove it from the list. Yeah, yeah, we've already done all of this. Uh, I'm just going to click through it. Yes, yeah, fine. Uh, that's fine. Uh, that's fine. That's fine. I have to go right back in here. Wait, did I? Wait, there were more options below. Okay, I don't know. I guess he's not going to talk to me about them. Fine, whatever. We already know the story of Horgus Squirm. I guess he's joined us now. Uh, I'm trying to see, did I skip something there? Uh, how did his mother die? Before you tell me about the being a father. Then I tell you this at the mansion. Oh, it's slightly different. Oh, okay. Yeah, um... Yeah, we already, we already went through all that, I think. Wolgif. Hey, Chief, wanna talk? What do you think of my new powers? Wolgif uh, pauses to think, rubbing his chin. I mean, what you did back there, I have a few ideas. We could send you to a pickaxe underground arena to fight. Give you a scary name like Swift Sting or something like that. Give you a great cover story. Enemies burn down your house. You're avenging your dead family. The public eats that stuff up. You'll wear a shiny, eye-catching outfit. Or a black one if you like black better. We'll split the prize money 60-40. Uh, 60, 60 for me, of course. You know, arranging fights isn't easy. Uh, those people are tough. I'll be taking more risks than you. And after we get Sop and Patax, we'll tour different cities, make some real money. Wait, what? Don't you like the sound of that? Do you have any other suggestions? Wolgif grins, his yellow eyes lighten up. I got one more. You ever heard of Razmuran? It's a land in the River Kingdoms ruled by King Razmir. A friend of mine used to live in Razmuran. He got out of there as fast as he could. Long story short, King Razmir of theirs is a god. He keeps his people under his heel and they're all terrified of what he might do. He sits on his throne wearing some white mask, giving power to anyone. Come and take power from me, he says, as long as you believe in me. Wolgif quickly checks that no one's eavesdropping. But that friend of mine, the one who fled it, um, has a half-sister on his old man's side who's a cook in the castle and a washerwoman who uh, the cook plays cards with in the evenings told her a juicy rumor. Word is, Rasmir isn't a real god at all and he's got no powers. So here's my point. You do have powers, pretty scary ones too. We'll find some shabby little kingdom, start some rumors, you'll show off a few tricks to wire the locals and that's it, we'll make you a deity. But first, I want you to put it in writing that I'll be your chief advisor. 
I'm not doing anything just on a nod. I've been there. People promise you mountains of gold, and when it comes to it, they're all, get lost, or I'll set the dogs on you. So, do you like the idea? Um, It's an interesting idea, but I need to think about it. Sure thing. All right, see ya. Uh, hello, mysterious elf. Damn it, you again, soldier. What? Uh, I saw you talking to the girl hiding her face. Who was she and what did she want? I don't know, Commander. She never introduced herself. But I bet she's not part of our army. I know all our soldiers by name and by sight. Wilser frowns gloomily, his cordiality gone in an instant. Uh, she was looking for some elf volunteer, wanted to know which tent he was sleeping in. At first I thought she was a messenger from Mendev. She definitely wasn't one of us. But now her, I see her all might look a little shi mighty shifty. The courtmaster's eyes greet you with concern. Uh, she was some sort of spy then. Okay. Interesting. Oh, blacksmith? Are you someone I can speak to? Oh, you just sell things. Oh. Okay. You just sell cold iron weapons, of which I don't need anymore. I don't need any cold iron weapons anymore. Yeah, okay, because all my weapons are cold iron thanks to this. Although I needed to take it off and re-equip it to get it to pop up. Uh, whenever this wearer of this amulet uses, whenever the wearer of this amulet uses a hex, the DC of the saving throws against it is increased by one. I know that is for Camellia, but at the same time, what if we just gave it to Ember anyway? Because she also uses hexes, and this goes with her staff, which we've given her. Yeah, yeah, this seems good. We're we're starting to get some good stuff going on. Right, so that's Nuar's tent. There's Suicel. Oh, and then there's some other ones back up here. Okay. Uh, that's the chapel tent. Hello. Hello again. I'm very pleased to meet you. Thank you for taking the time to talk to me. A young cleric stands before an easel, his brush hovering over the canvas without touching it. Instead of painting, the young man absent-mindedly gazes at the sky of Canabras, which is still streaked with towering plumes of black smoke. Finally, he notices you and smiles, shaking off his stupor. It's a pity I wasn't there at the Grey Garrison to witness your feats of strength with my own eyes. The flash, however, could be seen miles and miles away. Some people were frightened of it, thinking that the demons had blown up the remains of the keep. I, for one, knew immediately that it was a good sign. The light above the city showed us that there was still hope. Who are you and how could you possibly be used to my army? My name is Sozio Vanek. I am a cleric of Shaelin, the Eternal Rose and the Goddess of Beauty. Yes, I know that many people would consider me useless in a war. This is not a usual war, though. Just consider our enemy. The Abyss and his demons are the very embodiment of everything evil and ugly in the world. Perhaps a disciple of kindness and beauty might come in handy. I have no doubt that we will win this war, Commander. We just have to. It is our destiny. My role is to help you, and all those standing by your side in this struggle, to survive and flourish. Everyone deserves the chance to find peace and happiness in the world that they are defending so selflessly. Fair enough, what are you painting? The cleric's eyes linger mournfully on the canvas. The unfinished painting depicts a temple crowned with a rainbow-tailed bird, the symbol of Shailen. Five people dressed in robes stand before the temple. Men and women, young and old, they all gaze back at you with radiant happiness and joy in their serene eyes. My brothers and sisters in faith, they sent me for help and then they saved my life, Commander. If the Prioress hadn't ordered me to escape the city and seek help, I would have died right along with them. Instead, I met Queen Galfrey on her way to Nerosian, and hurriedly returned to Canabras, only to find my friends dead on the steps of our desecrated temple. I want to draw them the way they live on in my memory. Wise, beautiful, and loyal to their goddess and their city to the very end. Mm, they fulfilled their duty honorably. They did more than their duty. They gave everything they had to save others. Now it's my duty to make sure my friends and tutors did not die in vain. I will honor their sacrifice by making this world a bit more beautiful and kind. What made an artist enlist in the army? Perhaps I am a true artist, or simply an amateur who defaces canvases in my spare time. My goddess is a patron of art, so painting is part of my prayer, and I put all my heart into my pieces. But I am a cleric above all else so I must also tend to others. 
I went to war because here's where I'm most needed. Sure, I could be painting idyllic landscapes and offering empty prayers to my goddess, but that won't stop people from dying. My goddess has no tolerance for false piety. You had something you wanted to discuss with me, right? Yes, I have a personal request. Before we undertake our journey and leave Canabras behind, I would like to visit Martyr Zacharias' cemetery for a funeral. It's not far from here, and it's important. I would like to pay my respects to my friends from the Temple of Shalin who died defending the city. Also, if it's not too much trouble, I would like you to come with me to honor their memory. Their friends and family will be at the funeral, and perhaps the commander's personal presence will bring them comfort. I know that you are burdened by many cares right now, so I understand if you can't find the time. But if you could, I would be sincerely grateful. It was nice meeting you, now I have to go. You must be rather busy indeed. Leading a crusade all by yourself is no joke. I still believe that you are up to the task. This war has been raging for a hundred years, but you've given us a chance at victory. Okay, now is he a party member? He is! Oh wow! And he's just straight up a party member. Now he doesn't have a mythic path, I guess because he wasn't in our party at that point. He's just straight up in our party. Oh, that's cool. Wait, is the other one in here as well? No, I guess we need to go and speak to them. Okay. Let's read a little bit about him. A kind man's war. What's this soft, kind man doing in a war? It is easier to imagine him harvesting ripe grapes and killing enemies. But he came here, and his hands are scarlet not with berry juice, but with the bloods of slain enemies and fallen friends. The servant of the goddess of beauty gives all of himself to his comrades, trying to protect as many lives as he can. But who will protect him? Okay, so uh, he's got high persuasion, high knowledge, uh, or sorry, high lore religion. He uses a glaive currently. Let's have a look at him. Have we got anything? Uh, would it be go to class maybe? Is that uh, the favored weapon? It is. Okay. Glaive. Acolyte. Doesn't matter. Select your selective channel and extra channel. So he's all about uh, channeling right now. Luck domain. You can touch a willing creature as a standard action to give them a bit of luck. At sixth level as a standard action, you can bless yourself with divine luck. For the next um, half, the next half your level in the class that gave you access to this domain. For the next half your level in the class that gave you access to the main round. All right, so three. <laughs> um, you roll two times on every d20 roll and take the best result. You can use this ability once per day at sixth level and one additional time per day for every six levels in the class that gave you access to this domain beyond the sixth. Okay, and you also have good domain though. Wait a second. Oh, I guess you got to choose two domains on your first level? Okay, that's fine. And good. Uh, touch of good, you can uh, give them a sacred attack bonus. Okay. Uh, equal to your, a number of times a day equal to your wisdom modifier and the rest don't matter. All right, interesting. Uh, so how do you work for spells? Oh, I have to choose, okay. So you got prayer, 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 the spell magic. Is there anything else that I think would be useful? Uh, I mean, those are fine. Th th those are fine for just now. All lesser restoration with one protection from evil communal. Wait, why would you have protection from evil when you can have protection from alignment? In fact, how do you even have that select? Oh, I see, because it's a... Sp okay, I see, because it's the main spell. I got it. Um... I mean, that's fine if we give them rest restorations, but probably we could we could do better than that. I think. Um, I don't know. I'll just put the last one in there for just now. I have absolutely no idea what we're doing with this character. Unbreakable Heart, we definitely don't need though. Uh, we probably want True Strike in there based on what he's doing. And then maybe a divine, f a couple of divine favors. Maybe we make him like that, yeah. So instead of this, we give him things that would be useful to cast as buffs to himself. Uh, a line weapon doesn't matter too much. Uh, oh, I didn't even know you could use the scroll wheel here. Well, that's uh, useless information. Um, magical vestment. Guess we could use that. Yeah, let's take away the spell magic and stick that in there. And then level two. Oh no, are there any real buffs at level two? Like anything, nothing to the same level as divine favor. I mean, I guess these are buffs, right? Yeah, okay. So, like, strength. Plus blessings of courage and life. Uh, target receives a plus two morale bonus on saving throws against fear and death. Okay. Probably not that necessary. I guess I'll just take protection from alignment. Cool. 
Right, uh, anything else about him? So abilities, he's got all the normal cleric stuff. He appears to just be a fairly straightforward cleric. Yeah, he can use a shield. Uh, he's a human, so he gets skilled. He's currently using a glaive, but he is he can use a shield. Okay, we have a better glaive than this. In fact, I think we have it on you currently. Oh no, you're using a scythe. So yeah, we have the better glaive in our um, inventory for you. Let's go find that as well. Let's move. Uh, also, you probably need armor, right? Yeah, you need some armor. You also have a crossbow as your secondary. Okay. I might as well just equip him with some things that I have while we're here. Follow me. Commander's chest. So, um, why do I have so many? You know, get these out of here. Yeah. Why? Why am I carrying all of these in my chest? Definitely do not need them. Uh, that marching terror was, I think, the lever I was thinking of. Unless we bring out dark horn. Uh, we don't necessarily need cold iron anymore. Yeah, so this is probably okay. Uh, in terms of armor, what's this dex modifier? Probably not that good, right? Uh, it was terrible, yeah. Um, what ability does he have in terms of armor? You can use up to light armor. Uh, sorry, medium armor. Do you have any medium armor for him? Light armor studded, probably is fine. Uh, adamantium chainmail. That seems like that'll probably do. What's this? That's the kineticist one. Yeah, okay. Right, so grab him here. Let's give him a good glaive rather than what he's using, which is much better. And then give him some proper armor rather than his uh, scale mail. He's not that much better, but his adamantine, which I think gives him some damage reduction. Yeah, yeah, it does. Okay, cool. Right, and then we'll sell all the rest of that stuff. March on. Uh, is there anything else we need to do with them before we use them? Probably not. No, I think he's fine for just now. Right, uh, back to our blacksmith over here. Who I guess is probably going to be the person we sell most stuff to, because he's just there. Yeah, I don't need any of this masterwork stuff, because it's just not worth it. Uh, I could give him a shield as well, but I don't need to do that. Uh, because he's currently using a glaive. Ah! Guess I'll speak to you next, although first of all, more loot. Hello. Commander. A tall man with piercing yellow-green eyes gives you a brief nod. Let me personally congratulate you on your new title and thank you for your time in advance. I am Leotar Hawkblade, an inquisitor of the Church Viomede, the bringer of light. I require your assistance in a delicate matter involving one of your companions, young Count Darren Arande. What brings you here? Ask that you assist the Church Viomede in an investigation of the utmost importance. Understand the that the leader of the Crusade has plenty of other matters to attend to, but please allow me to tell you the details. Perhaps it will explain why I'm calling upon you. The Inquisitor's open face instantly reveals his feelings. He frowns and looks through you, lost in th his thoughts for a moment. I suppose you have already heard about Count Arande's story. I refer to the tragedy at the Heaven's Edge estate. Tell me what happened at Heaven's Edge. About ten years ago, several powerful demons managed to penetrate the Wardstone Barrier and commit mass murder of all the guests who attended the feast in celebration of young Darren's birthday. The unknown magical disease they had brought wiped out the whole estate in less than a day. That was not a unique case in itself. The demons had attempted such raids on Mendevian land before, but they had never dared target such a well-protected place. The Arande family was exceptionally rich, the estate was protected by elite bodyguards, and there were several strong and righteous paladins among the guests. Moreover, the revered Nestrin, Darren's tutor, was one of the most powerful priests of Iomade in the vicinity. All of them died, nonetheless, except for the young Count, who had suddenly manifested his outstanding sacred healing powers. Was that a divine miracle or a curse? That remains to be seen. You're going to investigate this old case again, aren't you? Yes, I am. I have several reasons to doubt the widely shared account of what happened at the estate and how it happened. You see, Commander, I was among those sent to examine the estate after the incident. I saw everything with my own eyes, and I still remember it clearly, even though it feels like it happened a lifetime ago. Heaven's Edge was a unique place that still carried the spirit of, the, of old Mendev, Mendev before the world wound, and yet on that day it turned into a labyrinthine house of horrors, 
like something I've only seen in our nightmares. Apologies for the aggression. I just I wanted to tell you about my suspicions. Everything about the incident seemed odd. Why was the only person left alive a young boy with a newfound talent for divine magic? Why did nobody send it to Canabras for help, even though the agony spanned many hours? We found the demons dead with their heads cut off when we got into the estate. How were they defeated? How did the, the disease kill even the paladins present at the estate who are said to be immune to any disease? If the demons had found a way to penetrate the holy warrior's defences, why has this never been repeated since the tragedy at Heaven's Edge? You're the only person who can help me, Commander, because the only living witness of those events is currently serving in your army. Your army's route will take you near the very site of the tragedy. Heaven's Edge has been abandoned and sealed with potent magic throughout these years, and only the Count has the power to break that seal. He is unlikely to invite an Inquisitor inside, and in any case he won't like me sniffing around his family seat. But if you, his commander, express your wish to visit the estate, you will be obliged to fulfil it, and I will simply follow you as one of your attendants. There are a hundred ways, a thousand paths, and myriad loopholes in human lives that the forces of evil can use to their advantage. I'm not sure which one of those led the demons to the gates of Heaven's Edge, but I know it wasn't a simple raid, the kind Crusaders face every day. That incident involved a significantly more powerful entity. And that's why I'm asking for your help. We cannot be sure that such a tragedy will not happen again until we uncover the truth. Hmm, you've been to the estate several times. What do you expect to find now? A young and inexperienced I was a young and inexperienced inquisitor when I visited Heaven's Edge ten years ago. My skills have improved significantly since then, and I pay dearly for that. Litor makes a vague gesture, pointing to his scars. My arsenal includes many spells and techniques dedicated to gathering information about people and events. Almost all of them require me to be physically present in the place where the event in question happens. That's why I must return to Heaven's Edge. Why can't you just search the estate yourself without involving me? The estate is abandoned and sealed with powerful containment enchantments that only the Count himself can lift. This is not the main reason, however. The main reason is that Count Arande is not officially under investigation by the Inquisition, so I couldn't just break into his house even if I found a way to bypass the spells. This is a serious matter, Litor frowns. A matter that threatens the reputation of the entire Church of Iomade and my own organisation in particular. We made more than enough unforgivable mistakes during the Third Crusade and are still dealing with the consequences. Your presence will give my investigation the necessary legitimacy, Commander. But there is more. In addition to getting official permission, I'd also like you to bring an independent third party investigator. I'd also like to bring an independent third party investigator to this case. Someone independent but well respected, and you fit that role perfectly. Did you question Darren himself? I did, but the Count insisted he couldn't remember anything about the incident due to severe shock. He saw the demons at the very beginning when they appeared at the celebration to announce the onset of the plague and mock their victims. He also witnessed the death of his mother, Countess Celania. Uh, that was all he would tell me, Litor pauses. We had found the young Count sleeping like a log on the floor in one of the rear chambers, having drunk about half the family wine cellar all by himself. There was no reason to disbelieve him on that matter. So you suspect he is hiding something? That he is to blame for the tragedy? I deliberately refuse to entertain any theories or suspicions that don't affect the investigation. There was a saying among my colleagues that suspicion is the mother of prejudice, and prejudice is married to failure. I can only tell you that Count Arande wasn't suffering from demonic possession, it was common malaise in our country at the time. Prelate Hullerun himself examined the boy right after the tragedy. He didn't sense anything awry with them. Alright, what do you need me to do? Litor bows his head to you with exceptional reverence. Uh, thank you, Commander. Now, I ask that you speak to the Count and tell him you wish to see... Uh, I wish to see Heaven's Edge. Please do not inform him of my presence right away. I will escort... I will join your escort when it's time to travel to the estate. When we get there, I will also require your help during the investigation. You will have to follow me, observing my actions as an independent witness. If you have any questions, feel free to... Please feel free to ask me. I'll remain here for a while. Tell me more about yourself. I am Ulfen by birth, but I have lived in Mende for most of my life, dedicating myself in service of the Inheritor. My warrior brethren mostly worship Gorum, but I've never been eager to fight for the sake of battle alone. I was a very good fighter in my early youth and could easily best most of my peers, but I didn't enjoy showing off my skills. Victory is bland on its own. 
purpose adds flavor to war. I can't say that I've always been a faithful sword of Iomade. Back in my mercenary days, fate brought me to the borders of Mendev, where I spent quite a long time among the Crusaders, fighting shoulder to shoulder with my righteous comrades in arms, and watching demons commit their atrocities eventually led me to something that I had been seeking my whole life, purpose and faith. That's how I found my calling. Even though it may be hard at times, I've never regretted my decision. Alright, and then we'll go through there just so I can remove it from the list. I have to go. Alright, so he wants us to go to Darren's house. That sounds cool. We can do that. Spoken to Sosil. Um, who have we got back here? Encampment of soldiers. Hawkblade. Let's just check the chapel while we're here. Uh, which is over this way. Just to see if anybody's Onwards. inside it. Nope. Oh, wait a second. What was that? There was something in here. Many somethings. Loot. Hey, for a glowing uh, croissant. Oh, uh, wait a second. Do we not already know that one? Did we not, in fact, buy that one? Wait, did I drop it instead of reading it? Oh, no. <laughs> I think I did. Luckily, it's still there, though. Yeah, I must have dropped it instead of reading it. Oops. Well, that's fine. Uh, We'll grab that. Oh, Darren, I was just speaking about you. Ah, there you are. How'd you like your new role? So, how'd you like your new role, advisor? Darren winces. You also enjoy poking me with that stick, don't you? Imagine it, me, a crusader. If my dearest cousin hoped to teach me a lesson, she managed it perfectly. An assignment I couldn't avoid without losing face. This idiotic journey leading straight into the demon's maws. I could have been on a pleasure boat right now with the loveliest songstress in Patax on my arm and a bottle of the finest Kionan wine to keep us company. Incidentally, I blame you for all of this. Darren lets out a sigh. Ah, oh, well, actually, I think Cousin Gallifrey is to blame for everything that's happened to me, and I suppose some of my misdeeds could be considered my own fault, but I can hardly be expected to take responsibility, can I? Certainly not. And therefore, I'll, therefore, I will lay all the blame at your door and plot my revenge. He gives you an innocent smile. I like how you can just be like, nah, all right, off you go. Uh, did you also receive a fraction of that unusual power? Looks like it. I genuinely hoped that getting away from you would be the end of it. If your gift truly did come from my Omade, then giving me a smidgen of that power was a very subtle joke on her part. I had no idea that our divine lightbringer of Mendev had a se even had a sense of humor. Don't get me started on my many acts of sacrilege against her. The obscene engraving, the truth about the test of the Starstone, is one of the tamest ones by far. Um, I'd love to visit Heaven's Edge and see, Aran see the Arendae estate someday. Oh, I was just about to mention it myself. I've been thinking. Now I'm in the middle of this whole crusade nonsense, I simply must devise new ways to have fun. With all the recent commotion, my birthday has completely slipped my mind. What if we were to celebrate, celebrate it at Heaven's Edge? It's not far from here and you'll get to enjoy a banquet in a bona fide haunted house. Darren seems to have trouble getting the words out, which clearly indicates how rarely he has to ask for anything. Since you're my superior and I'm your advisor, I'm obliged to ask your permission to leave for the festivities, and I want to invite you too. I'm sure the commander can free up an afternoon while the soldiers are on leave. You really gonna throw a banquet at the very place where your whole family died? Darren pauses, uh, purses his lips for a moment before replying in a bored drawl. Yes, what of it? Am I supposed to weep and quake with fear for the rest of my life? I've stayed away from the damn place for ten years, and now... Oh, well, now I'm going to return there to drink, dance, and be merry without a care in the world. You can keep your squeamish disapproval to yourself. Hmm. Alright, deal. Ah, perfect. You'll have a ball. I'll make sure of it. Something strange flickers in Darren's smile. Alright, well he doesn't seem evil at all, uh, unlike Ember. Just to remind you, Ember, it's completely uh, gonna betray us. That's my theory. It's Forn! Hello, Forn. Wait, do you think the mysterious elf was Kaelessa? Hello. The elf before you casually rests his bandaged arm on the weapon at his side. He bows his head with dignity. I congratulate you on your new rank, Commander. My hunt demanded I travel with your army. Naturally, I wouldn't burden your forces with the need to care for an outsider. 
I provided myself of all the necessities. I have to go. Hello. All right, nothing there. You got anything? Nope. Right, grab the loot. Get out. So, so we've done that one. Sila. I'm gonna have to do a companion check at the end of this to make sure it was spoken What's to that? everyone. Ooh, what is that? May Canabras be damned. It's a uh, pamphlet. We'll read it in a second. Well, in a bit. Hello, Sila. Ooh, more loot. Hello. Hello. So, what do you reckon about everything that's come crashing down on us? All the responsibility, command, this new power? I haven't figured it out yet. We'll see what happens next. Watching and waiting is a good strategy. Probably. <laughs> I'm still frightened by what happened in the Grey Garrison. Were we really chosen? By Iomade herself? <laughs> you know, back when I was a snot-nosed kid who just started down the path to becoming a paladin, I imagined once or twice that I was going to do something heroic. The lights would shine down on me, the trumpets would sing, I'd hear the voice of the goddess, or at least her herald, you know? I'd be informed that I had been chosen for a great cause. But that's the point where my imagination always failed me. Somehow, it really happened. Without all the trumpets or the herald or even anyone explaining what I had to do. Though it's clear as day, my place is here. In this demon-ridden wound. Quite a lovely war going on, in fact. Endless, I hear. I'm gonna need some time to wrap my head around this. <laughs> Spare me an hour and I'll crawl into some dark corner and whine about my hard lot. What can I tell you? I cry easily. All right, see ya. Uh, all right, so we've spoken to all of you. So anybody on this list I haven't spoken to? You, 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 you. You, 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 you. Okay, I've now spoken to every one of my companions. Oh, right, yeah, we have these two. Hello. Yeah, okay, they have nothing more to say, I think. Uh, well, I mean, they have their, like, little bit of background lore, but that's okay. I think we've been to everybody else, and now we just have Nura uh, Denduar. Or Denduar. Uh, why is she glowing when we came in? I mean, she's allowed to, but it's just a little weird. Knight Commander, how can I help? There is so much uh, I can do, just ask. Nora looks at you with eyes filled with enthusiasm. She's holding a notebook and a traveler's inkwell. Um, you probably heard about the wound I have, I have, the one that sometimes opens on my chest. Can you perhaps tell me if it is some kind of demonic curse? Indeed, yes, I've been told of your affliction. Nora appears at the center of your chest. Can you will the wound to open? No, that's a shame. Uh, what can you tell me of this wound? Well, it's difficult to say. I know of blades that leave never healing cuts, of poisons that stop wounds from healing. I've heard of witches' curses that are rewarded with internal wounds, but wounds that seem to reopen and heal over and over. Hmm. Do you know of any other cases like this? Uh, let's think. In 4671, a Mendevian army uh, corporal had all of his bones and cartilage turned into uh, turned to glass. In 4700, a scribe in Canabras had all of her skin simply come away like she'd been boiled, and in... 4638? Oh, you don't have to have insects crawling all over you. Locusts? No rats, perhaps? Hmm, no, too bad. Nora looks at you with genuine regret. Do you think it's dangerous? It's most likely dangerous, but you are under the protection of Iomade, Commander. She granted you mythic power, as they say. Surely the Inheritor would not leave you uh, to face this alone. Have you perhaps noticed that the wound opens at moments when you waver in your faith? Perhaps it's triggered by doubt. Frowning, Nora looks at you with sincere concern. Well, thank you for your answers. Sorry I couldn't tell you anything useful. I'll be sure to study this matter and consult a few of my encyclopedias. Tell me about yourself. Oh my, I could tell you many amazing things. You chose the most boring of all. But all right, I'll tell you about myself then. Where are you, uh, where are you from? Isgar, a small piece of land that proudly calls itself a country, though it hasn't been independent for a single day in all the centuries it's existed. They have a lot of, natural, uh, of national pride, but all of it is borrowed. Always looking to the great day when they can at last be free from the rule of Cheliax. 
This Gary loved talking politics. If two of them start bargaining over beats of the market, you can be sure they'll start arguing about whether an independent Isger will be a monarchy or a republic. I've always found it funny to listen to. A little disgusting, you see there are a lot of us halflings in the country, but very few are citizens, most are slaves. I was lucky. I have always been clever, ever since I was little, so they sent me to school instead of making me do grunt work. They taught me to count and write, and I was sold as a secretary to Lord um, Axelar Tresbot. He's the one I left Isgar with. Never to return, I hope. How did you come to serve Queen Galfrey? I was a slave of Lord um, Axelar Tresbot in Isgar, my homeland. Oh, what a man he was. He towered over his fellows like a rock over a garbage heap. A true hero. He bought me as a simple secretary, but he made me learn the history of the world wound, all of it, one volume after another. He hired tutors for me, even sent me to prominent historians. He didn't want a simple slave, but a slave with an impeccable education. Lord Tresbot was going on a crusade. He firmly believed that the servants of the good gods are, were weak, and only a follower of Asmodeus could stand against the, demonic, uh, the demon invasion. He took me along as a secretary, a historian, and most importantly, he trusted me with recording his glorious story for future generations. The King of Hell. Uh, yeah, okay. In his crusade, Lord Tresbot performed many brave feats, but even he could not stand against the world wound alone. In his final battle with the demons, when my lord realized he was doomed, his final act was to cover my retreat, so I could tell the world of his great deeds. Some people have said what he did was not heroic, just an arrogant moron puffing himself up one last time, but I say curse their tongues. My difficult journey ended in Mendev, where I found my freedom. There, I published Lord Tresbot's biography, and I don't want to boast, but ah, who am I kidding? Of course I do. The book sold in great numbers, it made me rather famous for a time. That's what brought me to the Queen's attention. She invited me to her court. After all, she was curious about my deceased lord, and was in great need of an expert on the history of the world wound. I hope you'll find me useful as well. So you're not just a historian, but a writer too. Will you write a book about my crusade? Haha, <laughs> why not? As soon as we finish off the demons, I'll get right to it. Just take care that you don't end up like Lord Tresbot. Uh, do you worship any deities? She makes a wry face. When I was a slave in Isker, they would beat me with a stick to force me into believing in Ad Asmodeus. They hit me and said it was for my own good. Ever since then, I don't like temples. Um, I realise there are different gods, like Desna or Caden, who teach goodness and freedom, but it's just... As soon as I smell frankincense, I see the slave, is the slave driver stick. Maybe one day I'll turn into a deity without cringing from a blow for not being reverent enough, but now, for now, I'll let others pray for me. Nura's smile trembles and collapses. Nura sounds sincere, but you feel like she's holding something back. Interesting. Okay, so maybe she does worship someone, or maybe there's a little bit more to it. Alright, tell me about the history of the world wound. Ooh, I could talk about that for hours. What, what exactly do you want to know? Well, that's a lot lower. Uh, Old Sarkoris? It was an unforgiving country, inhabited by numerous tribes of Kelid barbarians. Imagine Numeria, but without the metal mountains, or the realm of the mammoth lords, but with a milder climate. That's Sarkoris. The country was ruled by priests of forgotten deities and shamans. It's said that back then, before the world wound, the boundary between worlds was especially thin in this region. Since ancient times, Discari has had his claws sunk deep into the minds of the locals. His cults thrived here for many centuries. Aradin tried to stamp them out, but in the end, of course, he passed away. How did the world wound come to be? How the year Aradin died? Uh, 4606, a little over a century ago. No one knows if the timing was coincidental or if there's some connection with Aradin's death, but I'll tell you what we do know. The priests and shamans who ruled Sarkoris hated arcane magic, and all who practiced it. Wizards and sorcerers were driven from the land, or worse, one of their prisons held a witch named Arilu Vorlesh. We know nothing about her besides her name, and of course the atrocities she committed. By some unknown method, she managed to harness the terrible power of the demon lord Discari. Together they tore open the barrier between worlds, opening a rift to the abyss in the very middle of Sarkoris. The world wound slowly but mercilessly expanded, devouring more and more land. In a matter of years, Sarkoris was a memory. After a moment of silence, Nura adds softly, Sometimes I think, what they did, uh, uh, what did they do to Arilu in, the, in that prison? Just imagine, she was ready to give herself to the abyss. If only... Uh, the demons might devour her torturers along with her. To imagine such hatred, it terrifies me. Hmm. Sounds like you might be uh, empathizing a little bit with her. Maybe seeing her point of view. Nura? Are you evil? I, I, I don't know. I, I see evil everywhere I look. I'm totally turning into Hulrun in lack, you know, uh, now that he's gone. I'm like, Nura might be evil. 
because she's like, do I worship a god? No, definitely don't worship Asmodeus, the king of hell. Definitely not, wouldn't be me. And then it's like, well, maybe a really Vorlesh, you know, maybe she was doing it for a good reason. It's like, it doesn't lead me to think that you're good. We'll, we'll check her character sheet later and see what it says. Uh, tell me about the first crusade. It began in 4622. Yeah, yes, it took the church and secular authorities nearly two decades and hundreds of thousands of lives before they decided to take action. In the meantime, Socorus was only supported by a handful of volunteers. By the time the crusade began, the demons had already invaded Mendif. The crusaders pushed them back in what must have seemed a total triumph at the time. The forces of good easily crushing the demons on all fronts. They erected Dresden on the lands they conquered, an indestructible fortress in the capital of the crusader movement. In 4630, eight years after it began, the first crusade was declared victorious. It was the first triumph of the crusaders, and unfortunately the last. Tell me about the second crusade. In 4638, the world wound suddenly started expanding. A new wave of demons appeared. The Crusaders were all but delighted. Last time, they'd routed the forces of the Abyss, and they welcomed another chance to prove themselves, but this time, everything was different. Instead of scattering gangs, they faced a large and organized army. Dresden was besieged, and the Crusaders lost all the lands they'd won back before. They had to retreat, and all that remained of Sarkoris was left to the demons. But while the monsters were devouring the unprotected lands, the Crusaders erected a chain of wardstones along the border with the World Wound. We have Iomede and her herald to thank for their help. Um, it was the Second Crusade's only victory, but it halted the wound's growth. The catastrophe is, um, had become a stalemate at the cost of tremendous, uh, of tremendous sacrifice. Come about the Third Crusade. About 50 years after the opening of the World Wound, Tiskari found an ally. Baphomet entered the war, a cunning, insidious demon lord who prefers deception to open conquest. He set his enemies against each other and lures the virtuous on the path to wickedness. Traitors appeared among the cultists, secret agents of his cult. Uh, among, among the Crusaders. <laughs> for, for a time, no one suspected a thing, even as they watched helplessly as the Crusader movement fell to the ruin. Where once valor proudly stood, now greed and dumb cruelty reigned. The outrage was drowned in apathy. In 4665, the church announced a new crusade, hoping to boost morale. They didn't succeed, to put it mildly. Some fought the demons in earnest, and for a time they even hoped to retake Dresden. But the Third Crusade would be remembered as a witch hunt in every sense. Inquisitors hoped to purge any cultists from the ranks of fighters, but instead they got a barrage of denouncements. Um, or denou denunciations widespread suspicion and innocent victims. It sometimes happened that two orders would denounce each other as traitors and wipe each other out, much to the demon's delight. Just three years later, in 4668, the church put a, uh, the disgrace to an end. Of all the crusades, that one was the least glorious. Fourth? Of course, the demons had no intention of sitting quietly caged beneath the ward stones. They kept attacking Canabras, trying to reach the stone and destroy it, or just scratch its surface. Or, if even that wasn't possible, befoul it. The Crusaders dro drove the demons away from the city again and again. The Fourth Crusade would last for 15 years, an exhausting study in positional warfare. The demons attacked and they were pushed back. The Crusaders went on the offensive but were forced to retreat, and all the while the losses were tremendous. The Fourth Crusade's only achievement was that they didn't let the Wardstone fall. They didn't even retake a sliver of land to say nothing of Dresden. So many lives, just to maintain the stalemate. You can imagine how that affected morale. Well, thank you for your answers. See ya. Now, are you a real companion or are you just a, you're just a historian? Okay. I mean, that's fine. I kind of thought you might be, be a companion, but you're somebody I can come to to hear about the history from. Uh, I believe the storyteller has left. Yeah, he appears to have gone entirely. Um, All right, then. Well... It's almost time let's to end move. the episode, but before we do, let's do a little quest recap, just to see where we're at and what we need to do. Wow, okay, there's a lot. Okay, Pursuit of the Past. We need to find more Elven script. That's lit that's not a quest, that's just a do- if you find any, happen to go back to the uh, storyteller with it. Uh, opening. So we have to wipe out the band of cultists in, Dres uh, in the direction of Dresden. Okay, and find the lost relic in Dresden. So this is our main quest, and it's the last chapter to complete it because it's our main quest. A farewell. Okay, so this one's go with our new cleric to Martyr Zacharias' cemetery. Okay, we can do that. While the world burns, go to Heaven's Edge. We can do that as well. Both of these are last chapter. League of the Inspiring uh, Cart. Not the last chapter, but we should probably do that as well. We can visit the camp. 
Or nothing. Visit the nameless ruins with Nanio. Okay. So we can do all of these. So we're really looking to go out with Nanio, uh, Sila, Darren, and uh, Soacel next. Which is an interesting party. Banner of the Citadel. Make it to Dresden. So that's the same as Crusader quests. Okay. Uh, the Outcast. Wait for Kalesa's schemes to be revealed. Okay, again, not a lot we can do there. Cold Water. Wait for the liberation of Canabras. Done. So now I should be able to go to Chili Creek and speak to that guy. Which I don't know what it's going to get us, but we should be able to go there. Okay, so not an awful lot more to do there. I'm just seeing where we're at. We're still sitting firmly in the kind of lawful good territory. Uh, although we did do a few that were slightly more chaotic. So we kind of jumped back and forth in here, but that's fine. Um, what I wanted to have a look at was some of our other characters. I wanted to see whether they had any more story updates. So you don't. You're a horse. You don't. You don't. You don't. Darren? Again, no. No. We already saw your stolen moon one. Okay, so nobody else has uh, any story updates. Cool. Um, are we about as ready to go as we could ever be to go? No, because we still need to sell some items. So over here, let's do a little selling. It's a bulk sell. Oh, take that back. That's crafting. Uh, type. There we go. That's fine. Uh, we'll deal. The only things that we still got are books. I'm going to keep them for just now. Uh, I've done a lot of reading, to be honest, this episode. So I'm uh, maybe going to leave them to next episode. But we will read them before we put them in the box. Uh, and I'm going to end the episode there. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.